McHutchins is great for is lying. Hey, Charles, if you're great, I'm really great. Harrison Greeley III, really great. Paid for by friends of Harrison Greeley III. <laughs> Harrison Greeley III, Charles McHutchins, two rich men battling for our favor. Now it's time the people spoke and said, Enough! The public airwaves are no place for unseemly character assaults. Mr. Greeley and Mr. McCutcheons, please stop this petty and hurtful public display. Right. Paid for by Reverend Anders and Citizens United Against Negative and Unnecessary Advertising. Reverend Anders, what are you after? What do you want? Who is the real Reverend Anders? You fucked with the wrong guys, Reverend. Paid for by the Greeley McCutcheons Committee to crush Reverend Anders. Harrison Greeley III and Charles McCutcheons claim to have newfound respect and admiration for each other. And it's true. Fact. Harrison and Charles have shared with each other personal memories of growing up rich. Fact. Both have worked together to destroy a common enemy. Fact. The two have made specific plans to do things together in the future. Trust. Respect. Warmth. Harrison Greeley III and Charles McCutcheons. Friends. I would like to ask you all to sit and ask our distinguished guest to begin his presentation. Edmund Premington is a hunter, an explorer, a novelist, and an adventurer, a traveler, an explorist, and a noveler. <laughs> Without further ado, Edmund Premington. Oh, Edmund Premington, nice to have you back. Yeah, yeah. Hard to believe I made it back from the godless jungle to such auspicious and uh, humane surroundings. Oh. <laughs> Let me begin with a description oh. of the lion's roar. It is impossible to describe the roar of the lion. <laughs> but what I can do is describe its effect. You feel it first in your scrotum. Oh. Oh. Is there a need for such language? <laughs> I'm afraid there is, my dear, if I'm to be descriptive. He must be that, yes. Yes. His great jaw stirs one's intestines, and a tingle of fear constricts the scrotum. The great bellow rings out in a rippling wave, tossing one's very scrotum hither and thither. Its eyes grasp you at the base of your spine, crawl up your back, ring round the neck, and settle finally on the tongue. Oh, excellent description. Of your scrotum. <laughs> the lion moves. Each muscle so vast it moved like a school of fish moving together with one mind, and all the hairs on the tip of your penis spring forth! <laughs> At that long hank of unbraided hair tickles the scrotum at the base of your knee. The, the base of your knee? I'm not done! In your hunter's crouch, you feel the nipples on your ass become erect. All right, hold it. Hold up here. Nipples on your ass. Yeah. Knee scrotums? Hair on the tip of your penis? It's too horrible. Oh, no. Well, yes, the African lion is horrible. No, 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 the lion is fine. Listen, we've tolerated your salty descriptions long enough. Yes. Uh, sir, I warned you, my tail was not for the faint scrotum. Yes, and what is this obsession? This obsession with scrotums. I mean, you've mentioned the scrotum five times now. Not the same scrotum. The African lion affects each and every one of a man's scrotums. Fear seeks them out. Oh, oh, get uh, get yes. to the ass nipples. What's that about? <laughs> Yes, I, I must take severe umbrage at your anatomical logic. Well, sir, everything I say, I experienced. Obviously, Mr. Premington experienced these things metaphorically. Oh, yeah. Metaphorically. I am not a symbolist. When the African lion attacks... Leave doesn't... the lion out of it! You're scaring us with your description of some freakish hunter. 
Madam, I assure you, I speak honestly from the very bottom of my vagina. Jesus! You, you don't know what words mean, do you? Why, sir, I'm a writer. From the side pocket of my scrotal... Oh, and... stop it! Stop it! No one looks like that! Nipples on your ass. <gasps> the awful hair! Uh... Are you calling me a liar? I said, yes. yes. most yes. likely you are. Yes. Well then, look! Feast your eyes on the body that the lion scared! <gasps> Come see the multi-scrotum ass-nippled adventure. Enough scrotums for 20 men, but beware his description. You... Extra, extra! Oh, God! You're watching the Channel 5 News with the team you can trust. Benny Drummond, Margaret Holden, and Otto Berger. Together since 1925, they've informed five generations of South Valley residents. Winners of over 340 local Emmy Awards. World record holders for telling over 50,000 news stories. And the news team with the most great-grandchildren. And the world's only news team with great-great-grandchildren. Benny Drummond. Otto Berger and Margaret Holden. Channel 5's team you trust. Otto. Otto, read the news. Um, top story. Plane crash. <laughs> Margaret, no more news. <laughs> no more news. What, what does it say, dear? Plane crash. Plane crash. Plane crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know anymore. Hello? Hello? Who's calling, please? No, uh, Mrs. Holden, it's me, Mark. I'm here at the scene in the Andes. He's not home. We're calling. No, uh, all right, I'm just going to start talking then. I... Uh, goodbye. All right, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> hi, this is Mark Dreams here at the scene in the Andes where we are about to get the first look at the only known survivor of Peruvian Airways Flight 78, which crashed a month ago with 234 people on board. I believe we have a picture of the survivor taken minutes before the ill-fated flight. Todd Benley is his name, and he has miraculously survived out here in the woods for one full month without provisions. Let's go talk to him now. <sighs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. Sir, how does it feel to be the only survivor of this tragic flight? <laughs> Relief. A great feeling of relief. How did you do it? I was forced to eat the flesh of my companions in order to survive. My goodness, what a terrible choice you had to make. Please, don't speak ill of the dead. Their flesh was seasoned with courage and selflessness. And each time I think of their sacrifice, I hunger for the bones of their bravery. <laughs> I ate them all, showed no favorites, and here I am, full as a tick, the living legacy of their deeds. Well, you, you, you've only been out here for 30 days. Did you need to eat all 234 people? Well, when I get depressed, I eat. It's my outlet. They were brave, brave people. Some 